Hey everybody, Ryan here. Alright, gonna do a quick standings video for you here. So, this is the standings as of the last time I did a video, which I believe was the 7th. So, one week ago today. Last time around, Toronto was at the top with Montreal point back, followed by Winnipeg. Then Edmonton, then Vancouver, then Calgary, then Ottawa in the North Division. This is it now. Now Toronto is still in first, but now they have a three-point advantage over Montreal. Now they're next. The only place that teams that switch were in the three to six positions. Now in third place is Edmonton. Fourth place is Winnipeg. Fifth place is Calgary. Sixth place Vancouver, and seventh is still Ottawa. So that's the biggest change here. And honestly, Edmonton's played 16 games. And the two teams behind them have played 14. So they both, if they win the two games they have in hand, will be above Edmonton. But that's if they do. Calgary has been kind of meh so far. Winnipeg has kind of had problems of late. And it doesn't help that Dubois is not producing for them at this point. Once he does, that's probably going to change their luck. Vancouver, first win in seven... In the last six games, they had lost this first one they won yesterday. So one in the last seven, they have won. This is why they're in sixth place now. Because <laughs> they went from six and nine last time around. Oh, I guess they didn't lose much in that time. To seven and 11. They are, I believe, one of the two or three teams that have 10 losses or more in regulation. They actually don't have an overtime loss. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but they don't have a loss there. I don't know if they've actually played an overtime game, though. So, let's see. Goal differentials. Montreal went down. They're now plus 13 from plus 17. Toronto went up 3. Winnipeg was plus 7. Now they're plus 9. Edmonton's plus 3. Calgary's plus 3. Calgary was plus 2 last night. Edmonton was minus 3, so they have a pretty good shift there. Vancouver was minus 11, Ottawa minus 24. Now those two didn't get better. Vancouver went to minus 13, and Ottawa minus 30 now. Eesh. So, that's where they are. I mean, Toronto's definitely the best team in this division as of right now. Montreal is a very close second. And honestly, they... I know Edmonton's only two points back from them, but they have a game in hand, which I'm sure they probably will beat Edmonton in the season series anyways, the way they've been playing. So, there you have it. That's the Canadian Division, otherwise known as the Scotia North Division. And honestly, I think at this point, I would still predict those top four probably will be in there, is my guess. Because <clears throat> Calgary's been far too mediocre. Vancouver has been extremely pedestrian. Actually, less than pedestrian. They've been just awful of late. I mean, other than the win yesterday. But... They've been pretty terrible of late, and Ottawa's not going to get in the playoffs, let's be honest here. Alright, on to the East Division. This is where they were last week. Last week, you had Boston and Philly tied with 18 points for the top. Washington at 15 points. Pittsburgh at 11. New Jersey, New York Islanders, New York Rangers, and Buffalo all at 10. But, New Jersey and Buffalo have not played in over a week, so they have not changed. But the others have been playing. Washington missed a game or two, I think, because of COVID. And other than that, I think all these other teams were playing. Actually, Philly has missed a game or two. Oh, yeah, Philly's on protocol. Yeah, they haven't played. Although, wait, they went from... Yeah, they haven't played a single game in the last week. So, Boston's first in his division. And rightfully so. They've been amazingly good so far this year. I mean, they're the new... They're this year's heartbreak kids because... They seem to always win when they're down in the third period, so... Better than yesterday, of course, but still. They, they have a way of winning in the third period. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright, Boston's in first with 22 points. With a one-game advantage over the second-place team, Philadelphia, who has 18 points in 13 games. So, they won't catch them even in that one game they gotta make up. Uh, right now, Washington is still in third. Did they even play a game in last week? No, Washington, they are playing today, but they have not played a game in a week, so they have not changed. 
Islanders are tied with them at 15 points, but the Islanders play one more game. Pittsburgh is at 13 points. Rangers 11. And like I said, New Jersey and Buffalo haven't played, so 10 points each. This division has probably played the least out of all the divisions. But they've also had three, four teams that have been held out because of COVID issues. So, there you go. I uh, Pittsburgh's in trouble right now. I'm surprised. They're, they're lucky to be that high up, honestly. It's because the Rangers have not played well. And New Jersey has played was playing better than I, I think anybody, especially myself, thought they could. But they got taken out with COVID where they had like 17 guys on the protocol right now. And Buffalo, they were playing like Buffalo. Let's be, let's be honest here. All right, now on to the Central. Last week, you had Tampa in first with 15, followed by Carolina, Florida, and Chicago, all tied with 14 points. Fifth place was Columbus, uh, then followed by Dallas with 12, Nashville 10, and Detroit 8. This division has played a lot. I mean, ever since uh, Dallas and I believe it was Carolina, yeah, Carolina have come off of COVID, they finally started making up those games because you look at their games played, significantly less than they are two so far. Every team's played 10 games now for them. I think New Jersey's the only team who has not reached 10 games yet. So now first is Tampa, 21 still. So six points in the last week. Florida, 18 points. Carolina, 18 points. Columbus, 18 points. And Chicago, 18 points. A four-way tie for second. Just kind of ridiculous. But you know what? It's early. That's what happens. I mean, definitely the advantage to Florida and Carolina, because they played 12 games to Columbus and Chicago, 16. So, four-game advantage for those two. And I have a feeling they're definitely going to pull away, especially if Florida can keep playing like they have. Other than last night's game against Tampa, where they got killed 6-1. Play like you do any other game, you'll be fine. Chicago's a, honestly a, a huge surprise. I, I think most people, especially once they lost Taze, Thought they were going to be at the bottom, even below Detroit. No, they they are sticking in it. They're actually in the thick of that race. I mean, right now, Dallas is on the downturn, unfortunately for them. I mean, they started out really good, but they just have... Just, <laughs> they had four straight games against Carolina, and they faltered horribly. They've lost every single game to Carolina, so they need to figure that out pretty dang quick. But they had the advantage of games in hand over those two, Columbus and Chicago. Now, they aren't going to be tying Carolina and Florida because they played the same amount of games left. They had to beat them in order to tie them. But they have four games in hand, and they're only two po- or four points behind Columbus and Chicago. So they win all four games in hand. They're four points ahead of them. Nashville, ooh, huge disappointment. I know I picked them to be in the top four in this division. Bad choice. At least as of right now, it looks like that, because 36 goals for to 52 against a minus 16 differential for Nashville. I don't think they've been that bad since the early days of their existence. I don't even think they were that bad then. Detroit, I, I think, uh, well, I originally had picked them to be at the bottom until Chicago lost a couple guys with injuries. Like Sod, not Sod, I'm sorry. Like, uh, oh, I can't think of his name now, dang it kid that played in the World Juniors broke his wrist. Uh, Doc. Kirby Doc. Sorry. Yeah, once they lost Doc and Taze, I was like, ugh, the offense is going to suck. Actually, they haven't been that bad. I mean, they're only minus two differential, so really not that bad. Actually, they're tied for second most score, highest scoring team in the division, but they played 16 games. That also helps them. All right, moving on. This is how the West looked like last time around. Vegas, Colorado, and St. Louis all tied with 15 points. Anaheim with 13. Minnesota 12. Arizona 11. San Jose 9. Los Angeles 8. Vegas and Colorado have been on protocol. Vegas and Minnesota, I'm sorry. Vegas has come back from protocol. Colorado comes back today. So they have not played a game since. And Minnesota, I believe, doesn't come back till early tomorrow? Or the day after? I'll have to look at that. But that's where it was last week. This week, St. Louis is in first. They had a great week. 
went from 15 games played to 12, so played three games and had five points in three games. That means they beat Arizona twice and lost in overtime once in last week. Vegas, 19 points, is second. And then third is a tie between Colorado and Anaheim with 15. Arizona has 14 for fifth. Sixth place is Minnesota with 12. And seventh, LA and San Jose are tied with 11. But LA has the advantage with the row. So that's how that is. Now, honestly, I'm kind of surprised San Jose and LA played the same amount of games since San Jose missed a few because of Vegas's uh, protocol. They had to miss a couple and they lost to Vegas yesterday in one of the makeup games. San Jose definitely showing what we thought would be the issue. And goal scoring is still an issue and defense is a big issue. They've allowed the most goals in the division and they played two less games than the one that has one goal against behind them. So, and the differential minus 14 worse in the division. Anaheim second, but they're somehow in fourth. I am shocked, honestly. I really am. I, I mean, they're definitely, <laughs> they're tied with Minnesota for the worst, but they play four more games than Minnesota. So Minnesota, <laughs> unless they get shut out four times in those four games, uh, will be better than Anaheim in goal scoring. St. Louis definitely, I, I'm kind of surprised with how they play because it doesn't seem that like they have been playing that great so far this year. I mean, as the goals for and the goals against and the differential suggest, the plus four differential, that's not very good for someone leading a division. But it doesn't matter in the long run as long as you're in that first place, right? Vegas has three games to make up one point. I think they can do that pretty handily. And Colorado is four games back with five points behind the first place team. Now, could they win all four of those games? Yeah, I think they definitely could. Especially if they're playing like San Jose, LA, Minnesota, Arizona, or Anaheim. Although Anaheim beat them one of the two games so far, so. But for some reason, they don't play well against Anaheim. I don't know why. It's like you do so well offensively, you can't beat one of the worst teams. Well, I shouldn't say one of the worst. They are fourth place right now. I don't think they'll stay there. Because I mean, one game in hand over Arizona, who actually has been playing better, and they just got Ekman Larson back. That's an advantage. Minnesota, four games in hand, and they're only three points back. That's not too hard to make up. LA, it's two games in hand, so at best they could tie them. Same with San Jose. So... I'm really surprised to see my team there. I really don't think they'll stay there. But anyways, that's how the standings are. Not huge changes. I mean, a lot of it has to do with teams on protocol and just holding them back that way. So we'll see how this all ends up. I mean, and we'll see if we end up with an actual 56-game season or if they cut it down like they've been talking about. I think it just depends on if we keep losing teams to COVID protocols how many games are they going to be behind? Because you don't want to have, let's say in this example, St. Louis put, finishes all 56 on time. Great, right? But someone like Minnesota who's been on protocol, and what if they go on protocol again? Is going to put them back where we're going to be making up games into like the first two weeks of the what should be the playoffs. So St. Louis is going to have extended time off, possibly. And Minnesota could be playing. That whole time. Uh, and I think that gives a bit more of an advantage to Minnesota if they were to end up in fourth playing St. Louis because they have the fresh legs. Whereas St. Louis is coming off a of rest. Yeah, they'll probably practice in scrimmage, but it's not the same as game readiness. Because, <laughs> I mean, if Minnesota finished a game and is playing two days later and St. Louis is off for two weeks, I would say it's going to favor Minnesota over St. Louis. At least for a first game or two. But that makes a difference in a series, right? You lose those first two games, you're climbing uphill. It's doable with two games, of course, but it's still a climb uh, that you have to make. So that's where we're at. So hopefully everybody can stay healthy and finish this season, finish the playoffs, maybe have a draft. We'll see about that too. But that's where we are with the standings. All right. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. 
and I will see you all next video. Oh, make sure to like, comment, and share as well. Let me know what you think of the standings, if you think people need to, what teams you think are improved, and which ones you think are worse. So, let me know in the comments, and I will see you all next video. Bye, everybody.